<laughs> the thing is, I do think that people probably are just... I mean, you have a great body. People also probably are astounded about a certain kind of physical stamina, you know? I mean, it's like once I talked to you, I think it was on the phone, and you said you don't do anything special in terms of exercise or anything like that, that it's like your stage work takes care of it. That still is the case? Yeah. Oh, wait. Let me just ask, doesn't this make sense if people use their heads? How long have I been doing that? Isn't that the answer? I mean, wouldn't you automatically know that if I, I've been doing that for as long as you've known me or as long as you've read any articles that Tina's storming, da 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 If she's been doing that for 20 years, wouldn't she be in shape? Wouldn't she be in shape to do it for as long as anything? Uh, my body, I've been do my heart has been going at the same momentum every night for two shows a night for so long. It's probably as strong as an ox. Wasn't it more than two, two shows a night Some for shows. A and, no, in the early days, they were all two shows a night. Yeah. This was, I'm, I'm not speaking of the Ike days. I'm speaking of the last eight years of, of being on my own. So, but what the people are missing is that you can't put a limit on me. I've been doing this for 20 years. It's not like how long can you go and how do you do it. I have been exercising and singing, singing and in a high tone. So that means that's, that's the muscles and all of that, and the dancing, all at the same time. My body's probably in fantastic shape. That's how I do it and how I can probably do it and still do it forever. But they're not thinking. They don't know about health. That's what it is. I also think it's possible, too, that, I mean, there's a talent there. Just somebody for singing for 20 years still doesn't sound... I mean, do you know what I'm saying? It's like you've got well, this voice. So. It's a gift, don't you think? I mean, also... Well, why should I lose my voice at 40? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's talk about having the number one singles. This is the first time you've had a number one single. I know. I've never been number one in my life. You know, when you said that, I honestly have to tell you, I know it's going to sound real corny, but I mean it. When I saw you say that last night, but this went number one today, I just like burst into tears because to me it was like there is some justice after all i don't know if you feel that way about it but it was very moving moment yes, it right. really was and i chill i chill on it it was just a lot of people said that someone came to me last night and said there is some ju no when i was signing autographs there is some justice after all it's been said yeah number number one i i i I can't relate. I said, Roger, frame it. I have to look at that one. I want it blown up. I, I, I want the trades blown up. My life at this point, I had no idea to, that I would be climbing among the people that I am among. I mean, look at the competition of what I had to go around and to move out of the way to get up there. Don't you think you're better than them? It wasn't a matter of being better. It's their fans. and it's, Look at the fans and the credibility they have as well as I. And it's like my first. Like It takes a lot to move those people out of the way because of the people, the fans that they have. We're talking musical politics here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not about being better. If you put us on stage together, fine. But look how long as I've been better and I don't draw the people that the Rolling Stones and Jackson is drawing. So it's not about being better. It's about the people that you have to buy your records that are supporting you. So like now is the time that I will have those people. You know, it's just time. Did you ever doubt? That, no. I mean, during all these different things that you've gone through over the last 20 years. I mean, yes, there yes, I did. I did doubt, but I didn't doubt that it would happen. I just kept saying, God, how long do I have to wait? I wasn't impatient, but it was like nothing came from nothing. Everything that I would do, everything stopped after that. and was just taught, oh, yeah, you were great and so and so. But there wasn't that thing for me like this great manager or producer saw me with Rod Stewart of the Stones and produced me and made me a star. Nothing ever came from anything for me, you know? That is why I kept saying that it will happen. What I want. I had a dream. My dream is to be an actress. My dream is to now to be able to verbalize it. It's like to be the first black rock and roll singer to pack places like the Stones or David Bowie or Stewart or those people that are packing those kind of places, you know. So I want to be the first black woman. Now I can say it. I didn't know what before. I just said, I want to sing rock and roll. Well, I was singing rock and roll and I was doing it, but I didn't make it very clear what I want. I want to pack the halls. I, me, and now I'm singing my album on stage. My songs. I've never done all. I can. I didn't do our own songs on stage. We did cover versions. We throw one every now and then. That didn't quite work. We just get somebody else's. But I was forced to sing them, and I, I can. I can respect it now. Singing my own material. Not that I still don't want to sing others because I always change them and make them my own. But this is the first time that I've had a number one record. This is the first time that I've sung all of my songs. Actually, my own songs on stage, with the exception of a few. Everything what do you mean your own time? songs? You mean your own songs that are on the album? Songs that I record normally. Oh. If they didn't make it, out of the repertoire they went. And I would replace them with something that people were familiar with or something that I could really perform. 
before this album I did a lot of Rod Stewart songs, a lot of Rolling Stones, um, etc. Because those were songs that I could perform and really make my own, and I was sort of known for that. What do you think the ingredients are that worked, really, at this point in time to make this happen now? I'm going to tell you what the real truth is. Management. You've got to have somebody there that will do your dream for you. Somebody else's dream is not yours. And it can't help you. Do you know what I mean? If you get a manager that is opposing what you want, it's not going to work. He's directing you in a place of like where he wants you to go. When I changed to Roger Davis management, I said to him, this is what I want to do. He said, okay. Then he would get back on the phone with me and say, okay, we can't do this or we can't do that or blah, 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 or, or et cetera. That was the beginning of the why that you just asked. Do you think that that was the single most important thing that made the difference? Do you think it's also the choice of material? Do you think it's you coming okay. into we, your own in a different way? I, I wasn't speaking of the success of the album at the moment. I was speaking of the sex of why the comeback, why I was able to get to the stage of even doing the album. The material was superior. I say superior because it was finally captured my voice. I, of course, played an instrument there because I'm talented, because I can sing. I don't have a pretty voice, but there's something there. No, it's not a pretty voice. It's a voice that can capture you and bring out an emotion, but you can't put me with a Diana Ross or an Olivia Newton-John and those, the very pretty voices, they sound pretty. Tina doesn't sound pretty, you know, she makes a statement. So the quality in my voice, the material, the people, the writers, Terry Britton, Rupert Hine, Mark Knopfler, these are people that are masters in their own rights, and, and it was the material. So it was a combination of a lot of things and a time. There's no one like me right now. I stayed here, I did the same thing for years, because now it's new. The mystery to the old fans is like, what, she's still doing it? And then they're thinking again, how, and they put, before they do the how, they go, and how old is she? So that is the first two hows for the older crowd, and they're going to come out to see and go out and buy it because they are just really knocked out, the fact that you made it. Not that I have that many enemies. I mean, I don't have enemies, though. I think that my old fans were so pleased. And the new kids were saying, wow, I like what she's doing. I've never seen anybody do all of that stuff, you know. That is something real about that. And I'm real. I mean, I'm not a little group of somebody's producer said, now you stand here and you do that and you sing this and da da da. I, I'm self made. So, something, there's something about Mother Nature that comes out of her that's real and natural. It's going to always bleed through. So, that is where the combination of it all, it was all this talent and energy put together and a force of an energy that was directed into pushing it to the top. You got to also push past all of this other power there that's already there. You've always seemed incredibly disciplined, healthy, driven on a certain kind of path. And when I asked you if you ever had doubts, I mean, have there been really bad times when you just didn't want to do this anymore? I mean, I know at one point you told me it was real rough getting away from the whole situation with Ike. Right. But aside from that, I mean, just in terms of, I don't know, depression, anger, okay. you know, frustration, that kind of stuff. Now, this is what could be strange for some. But I didn't deal with that because, first of all, my success and my triumph was leaving Ike. So things that might have frustrated some was cake for me. It was like, oh, I can deal with this. This is nothing but where I just came from. Do you know what I mean? I didn't deal with that. That I was fine because I had my own show for the first time. I was doing what I wanted for the first time. I was surrounded by laughter and people. So it wasn't a matter of giving it up. I didn't think about a hit record. I was working. In that very first stage, there were a lot of producers, uh, promoters that wouldn't touch me because they felt the team is broken. She's no good without Ike. So it just took me years of endurance of working small clubs for no money. Just at, probably at the end of the week, I would come out with enough, like to say, basically pay my rent and have a little money. So, uh, but I just stayed there because I was enjoying it. And I didn't think about, you know, the rock scene and all of that. After I mastered that and I got all of the old coots moving and jumping and making them rock and roll, because I never stopped what I was doing. I was in the Fairmont Hotels, I was in Las Vegas, and people were just raving, you're great, da da da. Then I said, well, this is not it. This is not what I want to do. You know, I, I don't want to 
dress up. <laughs> I don't want to put these sequin dresses on anymore. Looking at pictures now saying, God, I, just, I remember when I changed my mind about wanting to do that anymore. First it was exciting going to Bob Mackey getting those dresses. And, and then I don't want to do that anymore. And then I said, well, then what is it? And it was, I want to get into those rock halls and do that stuff. That was the road to where I am now. We got a rock and roll band. We started looking more rock and roll. Just being that, you know. In terms of interpreting songs, you know, you've been really a, an interpreter of, of other people's songs and you bring something to it that's right. your own, totally. Yeah. How do you feel about writing songs? I mean, how do you feel about, like, well, taking that step? Or yeah. you don't... I'm learning how to take what has inspired me from people like Jagger, Stewart, and now Springsteen. I've sort of just gotten into, li yeah, I wanted to do so badly. His thing is a single and Roger went, you will not, you know. <laughs> I wanted so, Christ, I choreographed it and everything. I was going to do it, almost do it. Step back from Europe just in time. I am learning about the simplicity. I want to sing simple songs. But why have I been able to write? Because I didn't have that in my vocabulary. I was unhappy. I dealt with fear. These guys were dealing with parties and having a good time so they could write about their experiences. I know that songwriting is about your experiences, but my experiences was not to write about it. I didn't want to write about it. I didn't even want to think about it. Now that I'm beginning to have a little fun in my life, I think I'm going to be able to write it because I'm listening to these guys and what they're saying. And then I'm looking at my own life, but trying to put it into words is my next step. I'm going to write with Terry Britton as soon as I get a little bit of time off. I think that's going to be a great inspiration because he's fantastic. And I think I'll be able to tune back into how it, writing is. How I started writing was I was assisting a writer at Bollock Sound, and I, he would come up with four great lines and blow the whole darn thing afterwards. And then I felt, well, God, if I can clean up his songs, I can write my own. But I was trapped. I, was, I could only write about Buddhism, which I was just getting into, and I could only write about women, which was the, the sexy out of black widow spider thing. I mean, that's all I knew. My visors were up, you know. So what else was there for me to write about? Nothing. So now I got out, and I've been out for eight years, and the fun kind of just started. So I think I'm going to be able to start writing soon. The European man has nothing about marrying a black woman if he loves her and if he has chosen one for himself. In America, it's almost shameful. You've got to go through the mother bit, and you've got to go through society, and it's still that old slavery thing that they're still black. We're still niggers in America. I don't care how much a woman has claimed to fame what she is, like she's still a nigger. And in Europe... They go, they go basically on society, you know, how much money you have, what position you have, etc. And you, you are sort of accepted uh, and stat as far as your status is concerned. That is the attitude I get all over Europe. I haven't really experienced any because, of, you know, I'm a performer and I'm a I'm successful one. And there are some that has experienced some, but also there are a lot of white kids that said the British are horrible. Like if you are low class, mainly third, second. You know it, the hostility, when you go up and you ask, they go, what? Very short, you know, answer. So it's like they categorize everybody in, in, in so far as where they want to put you. But in America, it's definitely, the prejudice thing is still there, so. And you can feel it as a woman. You can just know, you know how women are, they sort of got a, like a cat-like instinct about when they are accepted. And it's like a sort of like a desire for that there. They, they sort of care about ethnic women, I think. Private dancer. Oh, I love that I immediately. To that over and over yes. and over and over. It's so. It's too long for a single, isn't it? That's. We, can't you modify it? Yeah, it's already oh. chopped. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. it's gorgeous. Isn't it great? Oh, that one and what's love got to do with oh, it? Yeah. It's just like I made it. But those two, listen to it those again Those two were again. my favorite two in the very beginning. But we knew that we couldn't do private dancer as a single. So then after we did Might Have Been Queen, then I realized, well, okay, to, for a release. But I just said, right, forget it, Private Dancer has to be the, the title track. I mean, it has to be the, the cover. I just fell in love with it, and I wanted to do it just like he did it. And I did, as close to it as I could. You know, he was with the accent. Was, when we listen to it now, we go, God, no wonder he wanted to give it to you. I mean, the guys teasingly say it. But I think that I sang the song just like he did. I mean, that was how, because I, I didn't want to change anything. It was just perfect for me. When you heard What's Love Got to Do With It the first time, <laughs> what'd you think? Can I tell the truth? You didn't want to do it? I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I hit my head. I said, I'm not singing it. That song is nowhere near me. But you see, I'm really, 
I don't know if you call it naive, but sometimes I don't get things to later. For a long time, I didn't know what I was singing about, what's love got to do with it. As far as I was concerned, I know that love has everything to do with it. Love is the answer to all, and that's all there is. And I was going, I was just, uh, I just sing the words or whatever. And then all of us, I didn't, I'm going to tell you the real truth. Somebody from the crowd says, yeah, Tina, right on. What is love got to do? And I went, oh. That's what it's about, because I didn't get that it was about huh, being naughty, like, forget love, come on, you know. And then, so Roger says, all right, all right, all right. So he goes, all right, just listen to this once more. There it comes. And I went, I'm not singing that little cute song, <laughs> you know. So he says, all right, just one thing. you got to meet Terry Britton. you got to meet him because he's a great writer, and, and maybe he can make some adjustments or whatever. And I went, all right. So I was, by then, I'm just like, oh. Fooey. This album's not coming together, and God, I have to sing this stuff. Yeah, I felt like I'm still singing stuff that I don't want to sing. When I was with Ike, I was singing stuff I didn't want to sing, and here I am again. So we walked in, and this little Terry sitting, his feet were swinging, and he was a jolly face. He's a very optimistic looking person. But he started playing that guitar, and oh, I went, mmm. <laughs> that was something that, you know how you feel someone's power? I knew that he had something there, and I said to him, it's too cute. Oh, Tina has never done, oh, you know what I mean? And it was like, oh. I said, okay, I don't, it's too cute. He said, all right, all right. I'll just make it a little bit rougher. It just needs to be a little rougher for you. So then I said, all right, and this is the key I need to do it in, and da, 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 So he was very liberal as far as giving to whatever it, it took to make it my own. And then I started liking it. But I still felt that it was wonderful and cute, but not me, because I didn't know that it was really naughty. If I had known it was naughty, I would oh, yeah, I'll take that one. What does love got to do with it, you know? Is it really an act? You mean you don't think of yourself as a sexual... Well, you don't, you don't have sexual... to put this on the tape now. I mean, you don't have to let the people know that I'm a dummy. <laughs> I didn't mean a dummy. I just mean you don't think of yourself as a sexual kind of... Yeah, uh... Well, let me fix it here. I'm an actress. I've been acting for years. That's as close as I can get to explaining it. Uh, yeah, that is me. That is me. That's another me. Now, there's a guy out there that wants to bring that me out later on when the lights are out. He's going to have to set up a stage. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> now, God, it is, but it isn't. Why would I want to sing Pretend We're Married? I found the song. Why would I want to sing Honky Tonk Woman? It's got to be a part of me, but it's not something that I dwell on and live by. I don't wear those rag dresses in everyday life, you know. I don't, I'm always in pants. I'm not throwing my legs around all the time. It is, but it isn't. That's as close as I can get to explaining it. So since I'm not as much of that as I would say Mick is, things will go right over my head and I have two different meanings. I mean, John Carter from Capitol is always laughing. I'll say something and it has another meaning and I'll come up with another meaning and he goes, he thinks it's great that I didn't get to what the real meaning is until two months later and I go, oh, when I did Acid Queen, I didn't get that I was promoting drugs until they put the needle in my hand and I'd been there working for two weeks and I went, I don't want to promote drugs, you know what I mean? God, I'm so naive sometimes. I wonder when I'm going to change over to that brain cell to really get it immediately and not a month later. But that's how I am, you know? But it's fun for me. I don't mind. You know, I know it. It's not like that I'm blind. I know it already, so it's... All right. Also, you don't want to be all jaded and cynical. and Yeah, that's right. That's boring, too. It's good for it to be a mystery, and then I get a surprise later when I go, oh, did I say that? Oh, you know what I mean? I mean, it does keep me fresh and new and sort of different. You know, I'm just different. Okay. So here comes What's Love Got to Do With It, which I didn't like the song anyway. And it's fine that it was time of the choice, because that meant I definitely had to do it on stage, right? And so here they're calling and waking me up again with the chart ashes. And I'm going, now don't start that again. I don't want to hear it. But then all of a sudden it started getting scary because it jumped. It started making all kinds of leaps. From, it, it went in the charts at 70, jumped from 70 into a figure like 30, and then from there into... And I'm going, hold on, wait a minute. It look, it's looking like... And then Roger's calling me with this other voice going... Darren, looks like uh, we got something on our hands here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump to conclusions here, but this thing is really jumping leaps and bounds. And then it started getting, I, I chill now, and I think about when it got into top ten because I went, oh shit, you know, it's like all of this stuff that these psychic readers have been telling me about is happening. I think this is it, right? And then it got to the crucial point. I started getting excited then. Then it was fine. You can ring my room and tell me what is today, Tuesday. When do we get the John action? I became excited then. Okay, so then it got at that little funny stage of like not knowing where it was going to go. And did I doubt that it would go number one? I became, um, uh, I can't call it 
doubt. It's almost like when you watch a football game or a, a basketball game or anything, and you're at that last moment, and you don't know if you're going to be able, if they're going to do it or not. You don't doubt that they are, but it's like, well, you know what I mean? I don't know the proper word for that. I was very anxious. I was very curious, but I didn't doubt. I knew it had a good possibility because it was. It's different. It's, it wasn't like any of the songs it was racing with. If it had been a loud rock and roll song, I would have said, no, it's not as good as Springsteen. It's not as good as, as what Mick and, and, and Jackson is doing. So um, maybe not. But here it was, a little t t t t and everything else is going, home, bang, 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 down, and those bus are down, down. And here this little ballad. you got to always have one of those little songs that bleed through, right? That's why I felt that it might push itself in. So that's why I didn't doubt. And then after signing, yesterday, that was the first time I was really sort of gotten involved. And I said, did anybody get the actions yet? Roger goes, shut up. No, not yet. You're not going to get them from L.A. until uh, whatever time it is and we're five hours ahead. So I'm signing autographs and I'd forgotten. And then all of a sudden he came to me and he said, number one. And I went, ah! <laughs> And all these what kids. was this, in Tower this Records? This was in Tower Records. And I just jumped up and I said to everybody, it's number one. And they all started cheering. It was wonderful. Oh, it was great. great, yeah. But last night it was even better because I said, Lord just <sighs> says, why don't you say to them tonight, because I had been saying, and this is one I happen to like as well. Most love got to do with it. So then last night I said, uh, it, what, this one number one today. And uh, this one happened, you, you happened to have made this one number one, right. is whatever it is. And they didn't know what it was. They were just like, they got very quiet, which is quiet at the Ritz, you know. And then the, they went, the guys went, do, 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 and oh, God. And that then every great. finger went up. It was great. They were like, number one. But it's like I gave them the credit because that is where the credit is due. They bought it. Yeah. They were in line. There were albums. I signed albums yesterday. I Not saw them lining up in yeah, the morning. It yeah, it wasn't just pieces of paper. <sighs> so, but I have resolved myself, in which I did for a while. Yes, I did. I resolved myself too. I don't know what make hit record records, so I'll sing now whatever it is I can sing at my best, and I'm going to leave that up to Roger until I find out, and then I'll fight with him. <laughs> okay. Then he'll have a problem. But I know state songs. But I'm not real good with what makes a hit record. As I never liked, I liked very few songs that were, were successful of Ike's and mine as well. So, What about the other, what, Proud Mary? Well, Proud Mary's um, a cover version, of course. There's one that River I, Deep. Yeah, River's Deep was, you know, that was one of sort of a thing that was by Phil Spector. I liked the song because it was different. It wasn't R&B. I was tired of singing R&B. It was the first time I'd ever done anything other than R&B. So I was very excited about that. Prop Mary was one that I had, again, I had begged Ike to do and finally started doing it on stage. And then when we signed with the record company, they asked that we record it. So that's what that's about. But all that other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Idolize you. Foolin' Love and Poor Foolin'. Oh, yeah. I have one, though. I have a live album from God knows when it was where Vanetta Fields is on it with you and it's all scratched up and I can't even <laughs> find it anymore. And it's like... I don't even that remember. That's one live of my in Paris favorite. Or, uh, what, that, that album live would in go. Paris. It was a blue album with a red and yellow wavy writing on the top, and it's like songs like um, "You Do This Battle" with Vanetta Fields on it. I remember you said, "Now we're going to do this battle," and it's like, "Oh, what the hell are the songs?" I mean, I don't know. It's just right. one of my favorite, favorite things forever, and I can't find it. Someone anymore. brought it another one of their favorites of Sue Records a couple of days ago, and it was like, "Oh Christ, look uh, at this!" Yeah. Jesus. Christ. Well, let me just ask you one more thing. I'll let you go about videos. You had said to me also when we talked last year that you felt you were a very visual artist, and with this onslaught of videos yeah. now, that it was going to help you. Do you feel that that's also been a part of what's contributed to this kind of now, success? Now I will have to thank MTV because I think I'm. I was the first black one that they took. Black one that they took. I remember <laughs> black wait, wait, woman. Wait, wait, I was the first black one. Wait, wait, wait. I have one of them. Oh, tonight at premieres. That's right. You know it is. Seven o'clock. Good. I can't wait. All right. You ready? Yeah. The question is that you know, do I think uh, the, the video? Videos. I felt in the earlier days, I didn't know if I was going to have money enough to do it because when they first started, I felt, you know, how much? Then I found out what they costed the cost it to do those things and people were paying ridiculous figures to get them done I thought oh well I'll never do that either it was almost like oh well, those people do number ones and they do videos I didn't really I knew that I would be great for it because it was so visual but I just didn't think it would happen well what started it for me actually was when I did uh, album of quality and distinction with the uh, heaven 17 so that sort of got imported into America and MTV took it I was the first black woman that they took on the on the uh, the program, and there was a lot of reverberation about it, and people were going, what do you feel about it? They won't take back. I didn't get involved with that. But that was the first click of like Tina Turner and people still seeing me, still helping me to hold on because that record didn't make it in America. 
either. So then after that was uh, my, the, the next one was, you know, let's stay together. And then was love and like now being prepared tonight, you know, the, the better be good to me. I think it's, it's the greatest, one of the greatest um, um, progress uh, things in dealing with, with my career starting now, I think that is enhancing it because I'm so visual. I think it's almost just the time for me, as visual as I am, with getting, making a comeback now and to be able to do quality work with me, with people, and, and I'm, I'm not putting it as I'd like to, but it's like as visual as I am and people want that for entertainment. It's perfect for me. Absolutely. I think that I could, I think that I will probably make a lot of money from that. Do you also, what other things would you want to do with it? Does it challenge you in terms of what you could do with the video? I mean, you say you think of yourself as an actress, you know, you are an actress. Yeah. So it's